Okay, today we are going to talk about um, reaction rates. So we're going to start something really kind of brand new on this from the fact that um, everything we did first semester and up to this point was something we did during Chem 1. This is brand new, so you may want to need, may need to do things like read the textbook, spend a little bit more time reviewing information, um, but this is going to be different. So, all right, we got to talk about kinetics. Now, kinetics if we just look at the word, it means motion, okay, whether you're talking about the human body or chemistry or whatnot. Now, as a reaction occurs, a couple of things take place. Number one, the concentration of reactants goes down, or you're using the ingredients. The concentration of the products goes up, or you're producing, you know, what the end result is. So, kinetics deals with how fast these changes happen, and this is something we sort of have ignored up to this point because, um, we just did. We didn't have time to talk about how fast these reactions actually happen. We just said if they did or they didn't. And so this is just showing you that over time, okay, you have, if this is the um, reactants, you know, the reactants are being used up, you're getting more of the product, and then ultimately you get more and more of the product and fewer and fewer of the reactants. Kinetics is one of those things in the very beginning, <laughs> at least in my experience of teaching it, seems really, really simple, and then all of a sudden you get blown away when we get into some of these tougher problems. So. I know it's the basics, spend some time, make sure you understand it. Okay, now we have what are called reaction rates, and this is simply a change in the concentration of a reaction per unit time. Okay, so we have concentration unit over time, and there's lots of different concentration units um, that we've used. We most often end up talking about moles, but um, just because that's how <clears throat> part of the reason we always convert into that unit. Now, for example, if, if we're calculating a reaction rate, now these lovely little bracket thingies, these are our abbreviation for concentration. Okay, so that's a pretty common abbreviation. So if we're looking at a reactant that we're going to call A, okay, it's what we're starting with. So this is just the concentration of A at time 2 minus the concentration of A at time 1. Now this is just like we have always done. T2 is the final time, T1 may be the initial time, so it's still always final, final minus initial, so when you summarize it, you end up with the delta, which is change in the concentration of A, divided by the, the change in time, and you just want to make sure with time, there really isn't a standard set unit that we always use, you just are going to want to make sure that they're always the same, and you don't want to get caught in that, it's another place they love to catch people. Now, the reaction rate can be positive or negative depending on whether it's a reactant or a product. So, just like with thermochemistry, we talked about perspective and where things were coming from. You have to remember which one you're talking about, because obviously if it's a reactant, you know, the change is going to be negative because it's going to go down, and if it's a product, it's typically going to go be positive um, because of how we're looking at it. And typically what happens, we usually like to talk about positive rates, and so because of that, you'll see them add a negative sign in for reactants to just make it positive because the reality of is any reaction that we run even though we normally write forward reactions one of the other things we're going to learn over the course of the next couple of units is that we can really reverse any reaction if we change enough of the conditions and so since we kind of have ignored this but we really can always flip a reaction backwards we always talk about the rate from a positive standpoint so that we just have the same um, numbers and we don't get confused by negative signs okay so this is a table it's in your textbook and again if this is this is new and it's it's new and it's different so you may want to bust out the old textbook actually read it try to process it cuz it's going to just give you more information so table 1 talks about the concentration of the react reactant and products as a function of time and this is our reaction we're taking nitrogen dioxide gas we're decomposing it to nitrogen monoxide and oxygen gas at 300 degrees celsius so clearly this is a pretty hot reaction this is just your time in seconds measuring it every 50 seconds this is your concentration of your reactant which again as you notice is going down then you have your concentration of your products which both of them are going up okay and what we're looking at when we talk about rates we're looking at how fast these go down and how fast these goes up these go up and being able to compare those um, accordingly and being able to try to you know tell differences <clears throat> and examine what that means so 
what they do, what we're going to do is calculate the average rate of change in nitrogen dioxide over the first 50 seconds. So this is the time that we're, we're worried about here, from 0 to 50. Okay, and oh, let's see anything else here. And this is the reaction that we're going to look for. And we put that negative sign in simply because it's a reactant and we always want it to be positive. So the change in nitrogen dioxide per unit time. And this chart is on page 557 in your textbook. Okay, so for example, how do we do that? Well, our rate from 0 to 50, we're going to simply look at the concentration of nitrogen dioxide at 50 seconds minus the concentration of nitrogen dioxide at time 0, and then we divide it. And remember, it's always final minus initial, or the second one minus the first one, Okay, and we got these numbers right off of the chart. Okay, this was this one was nice because it gave us data. Sometimes we have to use the graph to determine that, but if we do this math and we make it positive, we end up with 4.2 times 10 to the negative fifth moles over liters times seconds. Now, before you freak out and go, oh my gosh, where did this unit come from? Remember, it's concentration over time. For most of our concentrations, we're going to use molarity. So molarity is moles per liter, that's that's where that um, L on the bottom comes from, and then you've just got time, which is going to end up being your time unit as well, so that's where we get moles over liters times seconds. One of the things that gets really funky in chapter 12 is the units, um, and in chapter 13, so you got to make sure you keep tabs on that. Okay, so for, this is just looking at action, reaction rate, okay, so the average rate of the decomposition of nitrogen dioxide, don't get caught up when it says as a function of time, because that just means you're looking at it per time, over time. So you can see the rate goes down, which makes sense because in the very beginning we had a whole lot of it floating around. It's all based on how fast they collide, and then as time goes on you have less and less of that reactant, so the change is going to happen slower and slower. So that's what this is saying right here. The reaction rate is going to decrease over time, and that's just that there's less available to react, so that number is going to go down. Okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now this is an average rate over a set period of time, which is good except sometimes we want to know the instantaneous rate. So if we can freeze frame it at like 47 seconds, what would be the rate at that time? Now here's where our good old graphing skills and a little bit of math review may come in handy. How we find that is we calculate it by finding, don't flip out too bad, the slope of the line tangent to the curve at that time. What? Okay, so let's take a look at it and see if we can figure it out. This is that rate data. Okay, that's fine, hon. Um, this is that rate data that we had that's just concentration, moles per liter, over time. Now, here is the nitrogen dioxide. This was our reactant. And then here is a product, or the products rather, the nitrogen monoxide and the oxygen. And you'll notice the steepness of the slope, or the, the steepness of the graph indicates how fast this is happening. So here we have quicker disappearance, faster rate, faster rate, and then it starts to level off. Same thing here. We get lots of production, lots of production, and then they both kind of level off at the same time. So that's just being able to read that graph. All right, now as for the whole tangent line thing, here's the tangent line right here. That's this straight line. Let me try not to booger this up. Okay, <clears throat> now we got to find the slope, which is simply delta x and delta y. Now, where did I get these values for? From? Well, I had to actually use the graph. All right, this is um, looking at this line. If I think it's just using this point right here, it's estimating this at about 110 seconds, this distance from right here to right here. Again, we did a little bit of this with the last lab that we did, but we've got to use the graph to get our data. And then here they're just estimating, again, from this distance to this distance, um, using that to determine their y values. So, find the instant rate at 100 seconds. We draw a straight line that only intersects the curve where x is equal to 100 seconds. We find the slope of that tangent line. Now, don't panic. We're not necessarily going to have to do this in practice. We just have to know where this comes from um, and how we could do this, and then you're going to see where this comes into play. Now, for this one, we're, just as a, as a random question here, it says, why is the incline of, of oxygen 
line so much smaller than nitrogen monoxide? Well, that's simply if you got to go back to your balanced chemical equation where you had two nitrogen dioxides and you produced two nitrogen monoxides but only one oxygen. So it just goes back to the balanced chemical reaction. You were for every you every one mole or, or two moles of nitrogen monoxide monoxide dioxide rather, you're only getting one mole of oxygen. So it's just the the mole ratio is the reason that that is less. Okay, I told you this was different. Read the book. Okay, instantaneous rate. So again, you've got slope. We got to go back to basics a little bit. There is some, there are rather some appendices in the back of your textbook, Appendix A. Uh, starts on A1, uh, <laughs> I think. I know that sounds really obvious, but it starts all the way back with scientific notation and takes you through some simple things, but it also gets into things like log logarithms that we're going to see, um, so it may not be a bad idea to review those. But anyway, slope is delta y over delta x, so again, you've got your change in concentration and. Um, Again, we're going to put that negative sign out front because the, the rate or the change is going to be equal to the negative slope. So we've got our, what we pulled off the graph, there's our delta y that we measured, there's our delta x, we do the math, 2.4 times 10 to the negative fifth moles per liter over seconds. Again, remember rate is concentration over time, so that's where our units are coming from on this, okay? And they walk you through this on page oh, 0559 in your textbook. So, all right, rates in terms of products. Now, we to this point, we've only focused on the reactant. It also can be in terms of product. And we use the coefficients to give us a ratio of rates between species. That's kind of what I was getting at when I said that we made half as much oxygen. And the graph, the slope of it, was that was about half the, half the rate, or half the half the steepness, which indicates that it went half as fast. Since nitrogen dioxide and nitrogen monoxide have the same coefficients, the rate of nitrogen dioxide used is equal to the rate that it's created. That's why we had twos in front of them. Since oxygen only has a coefficient of one, it's created half as fast as nitrogen monoxide. So it's just, it gives us a quick comparison. Instead of going back and doing all that math and all of that tangential line stuff, um, we can use the coefficients in the reaction to help us. <clears throat> Excuse me. So for example, here is the concentration of nitrogen monoxide. Uh, they, they must have just picked the time, okay? And then this is just balanced uh, mole ratio where it's one mole of oxygen per two moles of nitrogen monoxide. And so this is where you're going to get 4.3 times 10 to the negative 6 moles of oxygen per liters times seconds. And this is at time... Um, 250, 250 seconds, so just so that you know they where that came from, because we hadn't seen that number. And that math is done on page 560 of your textbook. Again, if you need a little bit more explanation, that's going to be your first go around on this stuff. All right, so for example, the same reaction says if the rate of creation of oxygen, that's just production, however you want to see it, um, is 4.0 times 10 to the negative third moles per liter, that should be times there, times seconds, then what is the rate of disappearance of nitrogen dioxide and the rate of creation of nitrogen monoxide? Well, we've got 1 to 2 to 2, meaning that they both have 2s and that's a 1. <clears throat> so how do we do that? Well, so all we have to do is multiply this um, by 2. Okay, so our, if we just keep it positive for both of them, we're going to multiply that by 2 and get 8.0 times 10 to the negative third moles over liters times seconds. You could pr you should probably should show me the math, but um, <clears throat> I don't want to uh, run out of space there. So, Okay, so now let's talk about...